Hey everyone, this is DJ Music, and I'm back for another video. Today we're going to be installing Aether 2, as well as the Aether 2 server, and yeah, let's get right to it. So these are all going to be in the description. Uh, you need one, you need Minecraft Forge, the player API, uh, render player API, as well as the actual mod for Aether 2, and you also need a 1.5 jar, 1.5.1 jar. Um, all these will be in the description, so it should be pretty easy to get them. So first, let's go to the Magic Launcher. I'm going to be using magic launchers because you can switch to an Aether and default really easily. You don't have to worry about mods or jars or anything. It makes everything really easy. Click setup and you're going to create a new one. So go to new and aim, name your configuration Aether 2. Copy from nothing because you want a completely new one. Cool. Now let's select the jar. Go to the folder where I have it, which is going to be here. Desktop Aether 2. And then it's going to be client. So here's the jar, click open, and it will switch the jar to 1.5.1. Now click add, and add the 1 through 4 of the downloads. It should look like this. Uh, Minecraft Forge will have one error, and the rest should have either, the rest should be, be okay as well as the Aether Alpha mod. That one has no mods found, which actually is incorrect. It's just not seeing the correct mods. So yeah, that's all you have to do. Click OK, click login, and it's ready pretty much. So let's let it load. Here's Forge. And here's Minecraft. Ah! Where'd it go? There it is. <laughs> it disappeared on me. So, yep, when it loads up, you'll see this, min uh, this little menu right here. Just click Aether 2, click Watch Menu, and this will pop up. You have all the options. You can connect to the official one, which is really laggy. Uh, you can create your own server, which I'll show you in a little bit. As well as just play regular single player. And all your worlds are still here uh, from your regular worlds. So yeah, just let's go move on to the server. So for the server, all you have to do is you have to extract every single file except for the Aether mod. So do 1, 2, and 4. Uh, this is the main server file. You can get it from the website. Again, I'll put all these links in the description. So what you have to do is basically open all of these files. So I'll open Minecraft Forge, which is right here. You want to select all and copy it. And then open up your Minecraft server. It'll actually open up a new tab. Okay, so for this, all you have to do is you just paste Command V, and anytime you, this happens, you want to click Apply to All and click Replace. Make sure you do it in the order of one and two. Make sure you do one first. Once that's done, that's done for Forge, and you have to install Player API. This is another mod that's required by the mod, and it's not as big, but it is required. I did not do this the first time, and it created some problems. So first, copy it, go to here, and paste like that. I'm also using a, a, mod, a modified finder, it's called Total Finder, which is a pretty awesome application. So now you have all of this basically is the modified server. Uh, usually you would just be able to save this if you're using WinRAR, but because of how um, the Mac processes it, if you just change this to a dot jar, it's, it still sees it as a folder. Which apparently I can't because I already have a dot jar, which is true. So if I say, let's say server dot jar, it sees it as a folder. Uh, the way to get by this is you have to create one file. So open up this folder, and then this is everything in it. You want to select all, right click, and click compress. This will create one file with all the folders. This is the same as the texture pack. Um, this is the same way you do it. So look for, I'm going to sort it by date modified, so go to the very top, and you'll see an archive.zip. Now, all you have to do to make this a server is going to change this to server.jar. This is the server file. This is the modified jar for Forge, and it will work for anything that you need uh, for Forge and the um, Aether 2 mod. So all you have to do now is put this in your other folder. So let's go back to here. Let's go back a level. OK. Let's minimize some stuff. Cool. So now you have this one. I can uh, let's rename this. So server files. I'll remove the .jar because it does not see it as a .jar. It's a folder. So, now that you have the server.jar file, which I actually will include, include a description, um, so you guys can just download this if you don't want to have to do the work. So just put this in the server file, and then there you go. This is the server that you want to use. Now to launch it, I do it um, a little bit differently. You can supposedly create a, dot, a, a command, um, like a server.command file, using no, um, text edit and stuff, as well as notepad for Windows. Um, the way that I do it is I actually use command prompt, or terminal. <laughs> so what you're gonna do, the easiest way to do it is you type cd, which is call directory, 
and then you're gonna drag this folder um, into that window. So let me put this over here, put the terminal window over here. Cool. And let's go get that folder. So this server folder is on is in here. So it's right here. We have to call this directory here. So after you type cd, you do a space and then drag this folder wherever the server file is. You want to drag this folder into the terminal. It'll import the path, click enter, and now as you can see, it is here. So now that you have the server file, you want to start the server. I'll put this code in the description. Basically it's Java. Um, you want to call this much RAM. I have two gigabytes set, two gigabytes as well, um, dash jar, and then the name of the server. So I have it set to server.jar, so you use server.jar. Click start, um, and it will generate a new server. It's going to download all the files for it. Wait for that to finish. Uh, this Minecraft server window has loaded up as well. You can type space no GUI, uh, no GUI. I called it GUI. <laughs> but basically, that would just make it so this window doesn't pop up. It's only in here. I like it because it's a lot easier to type commands. It's pretty hard to with this. I never liked it. Uh, because if you have repeat, uh, repeatable commands that happen a lot, you can't really type stop. This makes it a lot easier. So I prefer this uh, window open. Also, you can call it on your dock really easily. So I like it. Um, so once it's done, it is not going to be ready yet. It, you'll probably have some failures as well. So what you're going to do is type stop to stop the server. Now it's done. That window will close, and this will go back to your name and saying your name, and then it'll be ready for another command. Now if you go back to the server folder, you will see that you have new folders. You have the world file, which is the world for the world. You also have server files, mods, lib, core mods, and config. Uh, config, you can change some stuff for chunk loading and stuff. You don't have to mess with that. The only thing you have to mess up with is the mods folder. Uh, once you have this mods folder, it will be empty. Simply, the last step is drag this Aether2 mod into the mods folder. And once you do that, start the server and wait for it to be on. It'll load. And there it goes. As you can see, this is up again. It already started all of the um, Aether stuff. It's done. So let's go into Minecraft, which uh, do Magic Launcher, like I showed you before. Load this up with the Aether 2 configuration. We log in. And setting up your forge. Put this in the middle of the screen. There we go. It's going to Mojang load. I'm also using my texture pack, so it's HU Textures. Um, I'll be doing a texture pack review soon because it's, it's a pretty awesome texture pack. I love it. But yeah, so this is it. Um, it's the same as before. So now you can connect to their server, but you don't have to. So when this is up, you can um, port forward your port. As you can see from this window, it is running on, where is it? There it is, 25565. So this port is the default port, so you don't have to have a port. You can use your public IP if you port forward it or you can use your network IP. I believe since it's the default, you can just do localhost. And I believe it'll work, it does work. So localhost, now, and this is it. As you can see, I have the bar up there. If I click this, all these are working. It's not gonna glitch it out. If you did not install it correctly, when you click any of these, it will freak out and not let you do anything. Ooh, this is kinda cool. Huh, well, and, uh, of course. <laughs> I'm not opt, but you get the idea. Um, it's kind of cool. Not by a lot of like. Anyway, so as you can see, it's completely working. Um, you can do social stuff if you're. <laughs> if there's only one person on the server, you get the screen. But yeah, I mean this server is completely working. If you port forward it, you can share it with your friends. You should also be able to use Hamachi if you set up Hamachi server correctly, um, just by using the IP address of your Hamachi. And yeah, it's pretty simple. So that's it. Um, I'll put the stuff in the description. And thank you. I'll see you guys later. Bye.